one thing that I've looked at is when you have, uh, so using what's called implicit causality. So if I say like, Harry got mad at Ron after he spilled the juice, mm. who is the he? Mm. Based on this context, who am I predicting you to talk about? Mm. Um, and then what happens when the sentence then disconfirms that? Mm. So uh, in this one study, a neurolinguistic one that I did, we were looking at something like, um, let's see if I can remember the actual item. Nervous parent Jackson was impressed with, we'll say midwife, midwife Matilda or something. When you say he's impressed with her, you expect me to say something about her uh -huh. because you want to know what, what she did that was so impressive. Mm -hmm. So nervous parent Jackson was impressed with mi midwife Matilda when you're expecting me to say she. Uh -huh. And then maybe you'll expect something that midwives do, like when she delivered the baby successfully. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I was looking at prediction of the pronoun and then based on that pronoun and the context, prediction of the verb. Mm. Um, and you can do uh, measure brain waves to see how, what, how well people are, how much people are predicting these verbs, um, how, uh, the words, how hard they are to access in your head. But then I was looking at what happens when you get he instead. Hmm. Does that change your prediction? Do you no longer predict deliver? And that study was interesting because we found that uh, people treated the he in different ways. So they were 